Alrighty, we have another one of our super short lessons where we're going to talk about natural sources of CO2 and particulate matter in the air. So we're going to start talking very soon about climate change, and in that we're going to talk about how we as humans impact the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But one thing to keep in, in mind is that there are always natural sources uh, that are going to emit carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So one is the respiration of plants and animals, which is going to put carbon dioxide into the air. Uh, there's also decomposition which will put, which is a specific form of respiration, and it's going to put CO2 into the air. And then you also have things like volcanic eruptions. Uh, way back in the day, before we took all the coal that was lying on the surface, sometimes if you have a volcanic eruption near a coal seam, that could catch the coal seam on fire and end up putting a lot of CO2 in the air. And this is something to think about because um, we may be trying to mitigate the effects of us pumping a lot of CO2 into the air by burning fossil fuels. But let's say a volcano erupts. Well, a volcanic eruption is going to put even more CO2 in the air and more CO2 in the air. So um, while there are natural mechanisms to take CO2 out of the air, uh, you know, we would have a temporary impact of that extra emanation into the air. Then particle matter, particulate matter, has also uh, some similar sources. For example, it also is released from volcanic eruptions, but it's got a couple of other sources. Particulate matter is just particles in the air. Um, most of the time, they're going to be too small to see. Um, if you get a high enough concentration of them, you get like smoke, like in wildfires, uh, dust, like if you have soil eroding and it gets blown in the air, even sea salts that evaporates from, uh, that's carried away in, in, you know, ocean waters that evaporates or, you know, on the shore of an ocean where it kind of is left behind by evaporation. And then there's smoke from wildfires. All of these things will put particles into the air. Now, particulate matter does serve as an air pollutant because if it gets into your lungs, then it can cause serious health effects. However, if you have enough particulate matter in the air and it causes it to be less clear, if you have a high enough concentration of it, it can actually absorb sunlight. So ironically, um, you may think, oh, we don't want volcanoes to erupt because that will put a lot of CO2 in the air. But one that thing that's happened is in the past when some volcanoes have had massive eruptions, they can put a large amount of particulate matter into the air, which ends up seeding cloud formation, which decreases the amount of sunlight that's going to get through, which has actually resulted in... Um, a dramatic decrease in temperature. So for example, a uh, volcano erupted in the South Pacific in like the 1800s. And even though people didn't know that this volcano had erupted in Europe, they saw the effect of it because they had what was later called the year without summer. Um, and the temperatures were so low in the summer that it was like they didn't have a summer. They didn't have crops, the weather was bad. It was not a good time. So particulate matter can have different impacts on the atmosphere depending on what you're talking about. And that is it.